Okay, you know what? That's better than nothing. When I would be able to find out if I got accepted. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> hello guys i know it's been some time it's been maybe a month maybe two months i lost count if you haven't noticed i definitely came back with a mic so i can provide better sound quality but i've obviously been very busy and as you can see from the title you probably guessed what i've been busy about and i know i know this brings in a lot of concerns regarding if my future content is only going to be revolving around nursing. The answer is no. There's definitely going to be a lot more nursing content on my channel, but I will occasionally still be uploading fashion videos, fitness videos, food videos, and mostly nursing vlogs. The moral of the story is this isn't completely changing into a nursing channel. It's going to be whatever I feel like uploading, but I know I was going through a very stressful process when I was going through the application cycle for applying to an accelerated nursing program. So I just wanted to make this video in hopes to help someone else that's also in the midst of applying or trying to apply in the upcoming cycle. So let's get started. I'm definitely going to be using my phone. So if you see me holding my phone, it's because I have notes. Let's get started. Also, if you guys want to make my day, you guys can just comment on my mic. I feel like this is the coolest thing ever and it makes me look very professional and I hope you guys like the sound quality now. I know on this channel, I haven't really talked about my career path. I guess this video is going to be the start of me talking about my career trajectory. A little background, I used to be pre-med and decided to apply for medical school this previous cycle, but unfortunately I didn't get in and decided that nursing was more suited for me if you guys wanted me to talk more in depth about that because i'm sure i'm not the only one in this situation for sure leave a comment and i wouldn't mind making a in-depth video of how i overcome challenges regarding this topic back to the main point of this video which is applying to an accelerated nursing program i want to preface this by talking about the programs that i applied to i applied to four programs in total the first one was utica which is around 16 months. Next, I applied to PACE, which is around 11 months. Emory, which was a distance accelerated bachelor's of nursing program, which meant that I could take the program in certain locations other than Georgia that was acceptable by Emory. And originally, the location I chose was Florida because they don't offer this program in New York as of yet. But this program is 12 months. And the last school I applied to was New York University's 15 months accelerated program. A little background about myself. I am a NYU alumni. I graduated class 2021 and I majored in biology with a double minor in chemistry and psychology. As for grades, when I went in to apply for these programs, I feel like there's not really a need to talk about grades. I mean, if you guys want me to talk about it, you can leave a comment below. Based on my previous experience, with applying to college and various programs. I feel like your grades, yes, they need to be decent, but in the grand scheme of your portfolio, they're not the make it or break it points. If you really wanted a general target GPA and grades for these programs, you can easily just Google for the average GPA and grades of accepted students if that's what you really want. I'm going to be talking about my experiences that I do think kind of helped my application. Experiences, at least for me, matter a little bit more than grades. So in the past, I have worked as a registered behavioral technician for around one year. And in this position, I was able to work with kids with autism. Next, I worked as a gastrointestinal medical assistant for around a year, was in a smaller private clinical setting. And I do think this hands-on experience really allowed me to gain a deeper appreciation into the medical field. And for my most recent experience, I was able to work as a medical assistant for a internal medicine or family medicine, which was in a bigger clinical setting. So I kind of got to work in an inpatient and outpatient clinical setting. If you are in the midst of building your resume,
resume, I do suggest you to try both inpatient and outpatient settings. Maybe you'll have a preference for one over the other, or you just learn new things in the different settings. Now for the programs in particular, every program you are trying to apply to will have course requirements. I would first make a list of all the accelerated programs you are interested in, and then cross check all of the coursework that are required in those particular programs to see which ones you checked off and which ones you are missing. In general, most of the programs, at least the four that I applied to, had these prerequisites, which are human anatomy and physiology one or two, or this could be substituted by one whole semester of human anatomy and one whole semester of human physiology, chemistry with lab, microbiology with lab, nutrition, statistics, and developmental psychology across the lifespan. Since I was a bio major for undergrad, most of my prerequisites were checked off, but I was missing three. I was missing nutrition, microbiology with lab, and developmental psychology across the lifespan. I actually took developmental psychology in undergrad. However, one of the programs I was applying to did not accept my developmental psychology because it didn't have the keywords across the lifespan, which covers from infancy to death. The developmental psychology I took only covered from infancy to adulthood. So definitely double check with your programs for all your course requirements. You don't want to just assume that they'll accept it just because it has similar names. You don't want to find out last minute that your course didn't satisfy the requirement and that being the only thing that held up your application. I know it's also very stressful to find a college to take the missing credits because most of the programs only accept the prerequisites if they were taken at a four-year or two-year college or university. Personally, I took my missing prerequisites at Geneva College's Portage Learning Program. It is a virtual program, which I really liked. I was able to take all the prerequisites I was missing at my own pace. I was able to finish all my courses in two months. However, I did call all the programs I wanted to apply to individually to see if they took the credits from Portage Learning first before I started my classes. So definitely double check with your programs of interest. One thing I definitely want to highlight regarding the coursework, no matter what you majored in, you should read the websites for the programs you are trying to apply to to see the acceptable amount of years since you've taken the course is acceptable for that university. For example, NYU, they accept prerequisites of up to 10 years time frame. Other programs may vary from 5 to 10 years, so definitely double check that. Next, we move into the letter of recommendation phase. I know most people who are looking for an accelerated bachelor's of nursing program have probably graduated from college either recently or years have passed by and you're like panicking like, where do I get my letter of recs and everything? Try your best to stay connected with the professors from your universities or reach out to your current employer. For the programs I applied to, generally, they all require two to three recommendation letters. Always try to maintain the connections you have in your life because you never know when you're going to need that next recommendation letter. For essays, most of the programs I apply to all required essays. I would say give yourself sufficient amount of time to write your essays. If you guys want me to do a video regarding the essays I submitted, I'd be so down to read you guys what I submitted for my programs. I'm not the best essay writer, but as long as the content is there, I am a firm believer that quality over quantity, okay? Keep that in mind. Lastly, I want to talk about the hardest part of the whole application cycle, the waiting game. After you've submitted everything you needed to your letter of recs, your prerequisites, sets, your essays, even though you don't have anything else to stress about because you've already gotten in all the materials you needed for the application process, it leaves so much space for you to self-doubt your abilities, question if you will be rejected or accepted or what ifs. I would encourage you just to continue doing the things that you enjoy on a daily basis because you should one, be very proud of yourself that you were able to submit everything everything and apply in general because a lot of people they don't even take the first step in applying so you should give yourself a round of applause now you should just do the things you enjoy spend time with loved ones because you are accepted into your program time is of the essence and you will be very busy studying and doing a lot of schoolwork just try to go outside enjoy some sunshine and just keep yourself busy until the decisions are out and i wanted to let you guys all know 
that I believe in you and I wish you all the best of luck in this upcoming application pool. And congratulations to those who have already received their decisions by now. And I wanted to end this video by telling you guys about my acceptances, my waitlists, and where I ended up choosing to go to school. I was accepted to three schools and I was waitlisted for one. I was waitlisted by Pace and I was accepted into Utica, Emory, and NYU. And for my final decision, I decided to stay true to my alma mater and go to NYU. So I hope you guys are very excited for the upcoming nursing content. I will be trying to vlog as much as I can because I know I was very confused and stressed out about what I was getting myself into. So hopefully this new nursing series can help some of you guys. And thank you so much for your patience and your continued support, even though I've been kind of MIA these past couple of months. Just bear with me. There will be more content. And I love you guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye.